All right, guys. Um, thought I'd do a video as we're coming up to the new year. Um, can I know a lot of people went about New Year's resolutions and all that sort of stuff, but unless it's got no substance to it, um, it's pretty much pointless because you won't stick to it. Um, see, for example, going to the gym, I did a lot myself uh, last year, and I will head back to it. It's just. Um, the new job is as bad as the old one time wise but it, it's getting into a point where I will be going to the gym a lot more than I was um, but at the same time doesn't mean I stopped exercising um, I was going over the park two three times a day and I worked at around work because I realized that I might spend an hour and a half on the phone a day so instead of um, Instead of uh, just sitting there going, okay, um, I can't go for a walk. I just get all the, the calls I need to make, back them all up in the sense of I'll do them back to back and went for a walk. And I did all, do all my calls when I'm on the walk. Um, so I still get an exercise. I want to go to the gym because I need to increase it a bit i mean i think i took some knocks with either it was a covid vaccine or the covid itself i don't know and not getting any conspiracy theories at the same time don't believe the government either these days um but i do find it much harder to breathe when <coughs> when i'm running this is this isn't this week by the way this is actually uh, we've got the flu zoe picked it up somewhere and then brought it for everybody in the house to share um but it does make it harder to get your fitness levels up because um, normally within probably two weeks to a month, I can sort of run for a good half hour up. Um, and then after about two months, I can pretty much run on a treadmill for two hours. Struggling, really struggling. Um, and it's not because I'm tired or whatever, it's struggling to breathe. Um, it does seem there's been a lot of people struggling after this, you know, long COVID stuff um, around breathing issues. So, I don't know. But the thing, I'm not giving up. I'm just going, okay, well, I need to stay. i will start with the walking. Keep the walking going. Build up on it. Took a bit of a time out for the Christmas, but even with my time out, I've ended up doing all the, the render work on here. And I'll still be patching this in for probably the next six months to get it where I want it um, but but the point being is you've just got to keep moving forward and the reason I bring this up is I know a lot of guys out there and girls um, struggle struggle with um, motivation could be depression could be anxiety it could be um, a multitude of things but a lot of it is actually seeing what's impacting you and what are you impacting to yourself so for example a key one although exercise is a very important one it doesn't like I say you don't have to gear up to run a marathon it's making small changes and it's just doing it on a regular basis so going for a walk every morning has a positive impact for the long term and then from that, you may find you get more encouraged and start going, I'll walk in the evening as well, or I'll start jogging in the morning, or, you know, you, you start motivating towards other stuff. But it's not just the exercise, it's things like sleeping patterns. Um, I know people sometimes struggle to, to sleep at night because of problems with work. I'm struggling at the moment here because bloody kids coughing and splattering all night get yeah, woken about five or six times <laughs> but <coughs> well my day to day um a lot of it is about literally realizing you need to cut off it's like this christmas period um i probably check my phone and emails two days out of the uh the two weeks over the christmas and new year um normally i'd have that on pretty much all the time but one of the things I've started to do is step back a bit and go, it's not my company. And to be fair, it is my company. I pay other people to worry about different things. Um, I'm on holiday. Now, that, that's a big transition for me to normally be 100% committed for the business. 
But over the last few years, you realise how little businesses are actually committed to people. And they're trying to steer it with this well-being stuff at the minute. But that's only because they're having massive attrition problems where people are going. People are quitting industries and a lot of the people, you don't recover so quickly or can get hold of. Like myself, if I quit, um, you're looking for somebody that can work their way through Excel. You've got somebody that can... It's got an engineering background, understands um, surveying, under, understands heating, ventilation, air conditioning, um, fabric of buildings, you know, roofs, windows, doors, work out their life expectancy for a 25 year period, calculate all the costs to that, um, plus able to deal with clients, run projects, manage teams, not so quickly to replace once we go and over the last few years a lot of the people I know have basically stopped doing it uh, several of them are retired because to be fair you have to have probably 10 years plus experience to sort of be able to do it all in the first place um, but the reality is that people are getting harder to replace it's very easy to get people and this is the thing was people need to get back to work yeah, but the problem is the people that actually are the, let's just call them the doers, a lot of them are realizing they do a lot for very little in return. Um, I mean, especially in the UK, we, UK when you often hear the, how goes, <coughs> you hear the phrase better off than benefits. Because in many cases you are. It's like my focus has been the house getting this finished, the conservatory up. When I retract from the UK, I'll be giving up my car in the UK. I'll be giving up my um, the room I pay for rent there. I can literally take a third off my salary or just go, I work part time. And that that's the reality of it because the costs are so high, you know, they're over taxation, etc. on people that actually work that, um, you start going, it's not worth the hassle anymore. Uh, you know, once you start reaching your goals, and the other thing I do find is when I sort of sit in my own environment, I come up with new ideas that make more money. But the point is, get back on subject, you've got to get into an environment where you've got your, your head clear enough to actually start thinking like that. Um, and that's what I say, you need to get your rest, you need to get your sleep patterns right. Um, when people regularly drop work on you and they go oh this is important i need this done by tomorrow you know for tomorrow you're going well you should have sent me two weeks ago i ain't doing it tonight i finished and you've got to drive it that way people will hate it because a lot of the time you're covering up for their incompetence but you've got to take control of your life a lot of people will just use and abuse it if they can so it's important that you recognize if you've got bad sleep patterns, what's causing it. If you're going to bed stressed and have a lot of anxiety around stuff around work, etc., what's causing it? Are you better off changing companies or changing careers? Because life's too short. You know, you don't need this crap in your life. Um, so f for me, you know, we talked about New Year's resolutions. I think the first thing is is recognize if you're in a good space or not and if not work towards changing it I think that's probably the, the most important thing for going forward into the next year um, the next thing is because because some of the like I said a lot of these are mixed together because you can get anxiety issues you can get depression you can you know feel overwhelmed 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 overworked constantly tired um, frustrated because a lot of the things are the same exercise is key to breaking it exercise like going for a walk clears the head it also gives you a, a, you know a bit of fitness and away from the the routine stuff like I, said, I do my phone calls which 
It isn't stressful because a lot of time it's just dealing with contractors, making sure they've ordered stuff. I'm not standing shouting at somebody down the phone for something they ain't done. Um, next thing is relationships. When things become difficult, people often shut down or cut away from people. Um, you know, what do I mean? Well, if, if a lot of stuff around you is a, a problem, it's often orientated around uh, specifics, like you're having a bad work time, so you may have, like I don't know, every Wednesday you have a poker night or something, but you stop going because work is interfering with your social life. Reality is, you need that social life, because <laughs> otherwise you've got nothing. Work's work. You know, if you quit tomorrow, they'll moan about it for a week or so, but in reality, they'll replace you if they can. But the other side of that being is you'll probably move on to something better, even if it's less money, because you realize you get your life back. Um, but those social aspects, even if you're sitting here, you know, I've got some, very close friends that are some of the most miserable guys you'll meet on the planet. Um, but we still meet up, um, and I'll listen to their problems and whatever, because um, it's, you know, for me, you know, it's it's just nice to see how they're getting on in life. A lot of the time they do winch a lot. Um, but they even in those conversations, for me, it's important knowing they're doing all right, regardless how miserable they are. Um, but also from their perspective, they're actually getting to meet up, um, talk about stuff just generally, um, and you both come away with it with a positive aspect that you've had some social engagements. Um, don't mean all my friends are miserable, by the way. <laughs> but the point being is, even with the most miserable people, even having those engagements it, it is positive because if you start shutting away because of work commitments and other things it's not it's not a good environment you've got to keep that open and those threads open I mean myself I'll, I'll be perfectly blunt I cut myself off from my siblings because they're an absolute nightmare no interest in ever engaging with them again um, but it doesn't mean I hate them or detest them or anything like that it's just that everything with them isn't worth the trouble um, where I find, you know, so, like I say, some of my friends are miserable, but they're not impacting my day-to-day -day life. So it doesn't mean you have to put up with crap um, to, to go through this. You can have people that um, you just want to meet up with, go for a coffee. Um, I mean, I quite regularly meet with people I previously worked with for coffees, you know, whether it's people I've worked with 10, 15 years ago, or whether it's people I worked with on the last account or sometimes I meet up with people on this account, you know, just go up and have a coffee and have a chat, see how things are going. Because it's not always got to be about um, anything specific. A lot of the time it's just having the general, general banter and it's important to do that. The reason I bring this up is these are all part of things that I would recommend focusing on for next year. Instead of saying that it's trying to make a massive commitment for something you ain't going to stick to, Make some small commitments to things that you can do and will have very, very little um, forced engagement, but it will be um, a much more positive um, outcome. Um, and like I said, try to be more social if you can. I mean, I like being on my own a lot of the time, unfortunately. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm on social, as I, as people know on my channels, I'll say if you see me, give us a wave and we'll meet up for a coffee, because meeting for a coffee is here, is literally there. The nearest restaurant is next door, and then the other side of that, it's about another five. Um, and over there is about another 16. Um, but, but the point being is, it, it's just developing things is better. Um, I suppose the last one is sort of yourself is being sort of true to yourself. I mean, one of the things it, it, it was a funny conversation I had with April yesterday, actually, because April knows how much I hate my job. <laughs> but like she says, yeah, but you're good at it, and unfortunately, it's true. 
because because for me i've seen the decline in the industry um since when i was with Carillion, and we've got a lot of um can i call them paper managers they're just like the old cardboard cut you know they cut the cutouts for a saloon the old uh, cowboy town there's no they're all face and nothing else they've got no level of experience knowledge or whatever um and the industry is saturated with them um and people like myself are just they ain't worth this hassle anymore you know we haven't explained the same thing over and over again because firstly they have a high churn because they're useless Secondly, um, you know you, they're not listening to half the stuff you're explaining to them because they don't understand it. And then you'll get, oh, well, maybe if you um, sort of spent more time. I don't want to spend more time with them. Uh, and it's not being negative. The fact is, I've got my own stuff to do. If they don't know what their job is, why is it my problem? <laughs> um, it becomes my problem that they don't know what they're doing, but reality is that's what's happening that's why people keep leaving um it's because you get getting tired of having large amounts of people that just haven't got a clue um but it gets back to the conversation piece because that was april's view on it yeah but you're good at your job and it's like yeah i know but i hate it <laughs> you know i like the stuff that i should just be doing but you get involved in so many other things because there's so many uh, gaps in the businesses these days because it's just become a bit of a mess not just one company i've yet to go to any company that's actually performing very well these days um i mean for all the carillion sins it was very good on its processes so even if you were the most stupid person on the planet, as long as you could follow a process, you could do okay. Most of the companies I've experienced recently haven't got any of them, you know, and the stupid thing is they started with them, um, but they've lost them. Same as they've lost the experience and knowledge of the people that were there a while ago. But getting back on point, um, that was April was the voice in my head and not in a, a mental way but she was just you know April my wife by the <laughs> she was just sort of saying well yeah you hate your job but you've got your house to finish you can work on something else and focus on other stuff but you're good at it that's that's the problem with it and that's one of the fundamental things that you've got to recognize as well there is stuff that you're good at you may not recognize it yourself um, I was listening to uh, I think it was Alan Carr yesterday he was on about something similar about where society has this mixed up view of well rounded people I've heard teachers and that talk about this nonsense complete nonsense, utter rubbish um, but that's that's how society is built you go for a job interview not everybody gets a job it's the best candidate let's be honest they don't go well everybody gets a certificate and everybody gets a job no nah, it's the best candidate society's been set up wrong because it's been set up by um the hippies have overrun the asylum in the 60s i think late 50s onwards uh, so the education system is a mess the the point being is you may want to be an artist but rubbish at it and your voice to yourself, if you're true to yourself, is that you're a rubbish artist. I love photography, but I'm not a photographer. Um, I know my photos aren't fantastic. I know I could spend a lot more time on it and a lot more money on it. But with society today, with access through the internet and whatever, I'm competing with a lot better photographers than I'll ever be. Um, so... And I don't want to do weddings. <laughs> um, so the point being is, I know what my abilities are and what the where um, I make the most money. But at the same time, 
you've got also got to give yourself a break and understand that although I may not be the best photographer on the planet, um, doing the crappy job I hate could actually fund me buying as much camera gear as I want and uh, moving to part time I could actually start doing camera courses and improve my photography. The point being is you've got to make some sacrifices to get to the goals that you want. Um, and like I said, I already accept I will not be a photographer. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not, not mediocre, um, but when I used to go to my, the camera club with my dad, there was, um, there's quite a strong group of people in there, in the sense of, you, you know they know what they're doing. You've got two university lecturers that do uh, like photography courses and art, you got a guy that um, trains people on Photoshop. Um, you got another guy that does um, photography for the um, what do you call it? The the rodeos in America. Um, another guy does photography for tourist boards for Estonia, Bavaria, and others. And you're sitting there going, "Yeah, these guys are much better than I'll ever be." <laughs> <laughs> but the point being is you respect them for their abilities and the other side of that being is they want to help you and that's another key thing is don't be oh well you know I'm going to be better or, uh, you've always got to learn from somebody else um, and it's appreciating the knowledge in the room it's appreciating what other people can do but like I says in my day job it is hard really really hard um, because a lot of people don't want to admit that they're not very good they don't want to admit they need help um, it's of, of more often than not deflection blaming lying all the stuff that you would hate um, that I experience far too often these days um, and it's often not about me by the way because I'm, I'm as you probably realize I'm quite straightforward with it you know if somebody says oh you did this I'll go no I didn't and let's escalate it. Let's talk about it properly. Don't mean talking behind my back and lying about me. Let's all uh, get it all out in the open. But the point being is, like the same with the photography, I know I love photography. It's something I want to do. It's something I enjoy. But would I ever be able to make a living on it? I won't have any illusions on the fact I wouldn't expect my photography to make as much as I can do on my day job. But it doesn't mean... I couldn't be a photographer it just means that it would be a long new path for me and um, financially I'd probably be better off focusing on what I'm, I know I'm good at and get told I'm good at that makes money look at how I can expand that out and then drop him back on the photography so part of that sort of message out there is yeah you may believe you're the best dancer out there, but if you're true to yourself and you, you, you're listening to your own inner voice or trying to ignore it, when your inner voice is sort of telling you, oh yeah, well, such and such is a better dancer, or you can, they can jump higher, they can do this, da da da. That, that voice is more true than anything else. Doesn't mean give up on your dreams, your goals or whatever, but sometimes you've got to have a bit of reality check and think, are you going to be push forward with it or do you need to change direction slightly um, and keep yourself in a bit of reality doesn't mean give up just means where do you need to focus your um, your main priorities because sometimes it is about the priorities at that time I said this year's priority was getting this house well 18 months in it now 18 months without the house so First, first bit was buy the house, second bit renovate it, final bit's the conservatory, last bit's pay it off, and then we're looking at the next property. Once we have five, which I'm still umming and ahhing at the minute, whether to put it in the investments or put it in the property, I don't know yet. The good thing about property is it's there. The markets are very unstable these days, so it's hard to predict where we're going at the minute. 
because we are sort of in this sort of global recession. But one of the things I'll always say is never dither. Always, always try and drive things forward. Never sit there thinking something will change tomorrow. So much. The only thing that will change it is you. You've got to push it forward. You need to push for what, whatever you want to achieve. I apologise today because my nose is blocked. This flu is fantastic. Although, to be fair, I did that last bit of rendering yesterday when I was feeling really rough, and it was it was quite good doing it because actually I felt a little better for actually doing some work. Um, just got to tidy, tidy the bits up on the top there. Doing that slowly because um, it's had the steels treated. Then I put some uh, um, concrete in there, let that dry. Then put the first layer of render on there. <coughs> I'm probably going to leave it another day or so, then put another layer on it. But yeah. But either way, just recognise not everything happens in a day. If something goes wrong. It's not the end of the world. Like I said, for me, a lot of time I'll just go to bed and call it a day, and then the following day start again. I know sometimes it's hard to get up in the morning, um, especially if you feel everything's crap. With those sort of things, you need to focus on that was yesterday and just get up. And I know people, oh, it's easy for you to say. Um, the reality is, it's a bit like when people talk about therapy. I'm not a fan of therapy myself. Um, I haven't been in therapy, by the way, but I find a lot of people that I know are either having it or had it, is people just sit there and listen to you. Well, your head does that for you. You know, you listen to your head all the time. What you actually want is some actions, because you may not have an instant solution, but the fact is, you need something that's changed the direction, otherwise you're stuck in limbo. And that's why I say, you know, like, we're drawing a line in the sand. That was yesterday. Today's a different day, and you, you could do something about it. And there's no point dwelling on, like, I don't know, say you've got massive debt. It ain't going to change today, is it? Is, is dwelling on it going to fix it? No. What you need to do is get out of bed and do something about it. Start working out whether it's you've got to renegotiate what you're paying back. File for bankruptcy. You need to do something about it. Get a second job. It's up to you what you do with it. But the fact is, staying in bed isn't fixing it. That All that's doing is making you miserable. You're stuck in a rut. It's um, The debt's probably getting worse. Um, you're not fixing the problem. And that's why I sort of say is don't don't sit in that situation. You've got to get out of bed. And I don't want to hear it's easy to, for me, me to say. It's up to you to get yourself out of bed. You've got to motivate yourself of why you're getting out of bed. Like I said, is it going to phone up and renegotiate it? Is it going to be a case of uh, filing for bankruptcy? Is it a case of getting a second job? Is it a case of selling some stuff? That's all with you. Um, but feeling sorry for yourself doesn't fix anything blaming others doesn't fix anything um, you've got to realise life is today so what happened yesterday isn't important you may feel it but reality is that was yesterday you know I've had some hard times relating to betrayed by family and all that sort of stuff but at the same time just okay move past it got rid of them don't have to speak to them see them or anything else does it affect today no will it affect tomorrow no because they're gone that's it we moved on move past it you didn't get stuck in in a rut you did something about it um and that's what you've got to realise. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's finances, relationships, or whatever. If you sit there and dwell on it and sit on there and pity me, it will stay like it. You've got to get out of bed and sort it out. Get your life in order. It's up to you, no one else. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And that's my.
probably not going to do one for New Year, so this is probably it. Cause I think that's probably some food for thought anyway. Take care. Happy New Year.